Hello, friends. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 63. 63. This, what is the topic? This is what's race got to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's talk about that. I think we need to talk about it yeah. because it's a big thing going on right now. And mm-hmm. we usually do try and touch on what's going on in our world. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. is important. Well, before we do anything from last week. I do. I have, um, last week we did The Fifth Dimension. Okay. That was a fun episode. I enjoyed that one. Since I've been working from home, I don't get a chance to really listen back to the podcast as much as I used to. Like, maybe I'll listen to it once while I'm cleaning or whatever. But that episode, I really enjoyed it, and I actually listened to it a couple of times. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good one. But Yeah, it was. uh, Sherry sent us this. She said, thank you for doing this episode. You really cleared up a lot of misconceptions that I had and answered so many questions. It makes so much more sense now. I feel similar to you that I may stay more in the fourth dimension, and on occasion when I slip back into the third, it's for just a short time. I, too, have felt a shift in so many of the people around me since my spiritual awakening. Keep shining your lights. You both are making a difference. Love y'all. That's cool. <laughs> Terry? Nice. No, this is Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, Sorry, yeah. Mm-hmm. Terry. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah, that we always cool. appreciate your comments. Nice. Yeah, definitely. So cool. I wanted to share that. And we did get response from other listeners. You know, a good episode. It was great information. And uh, I hope we broke it down well for everybody because it was a big episode, you know. Right. If you weren't familiar with too much of it and go right into that episode as your first one, you might be a little lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little complex. Yeah, it was a complex topic. but Yeah. Yeah. But it was fun. It was fun. Cool. Yeah. So that's all I have. That's all for last yeah, week? because nice. you know we've got so much on this topic to talk about. I thought I'll keep that brief. Yeah, so we cool. Can get into this. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump on into uh, episode sixty-three. Sixty-three. What's race got to do with it? So obviously, <clears throat> we picked this episode for for obvious reasons because right. of what's going on right now in the world. And I'll tell you that when this started, when the day that George Floyd was killed. I, I have to be honest that my first reaction was, again, here it goes. It's like another school shooting. We're doing this again. This is happening again. Never in a million years did I think that it was going to start this amazing civil rights movement. But in this civil rights movement that we're we're seeing right now, we're dealing with a lot of hate. A lot of hate. And so I kind of felt like what we needed to focus on in this show is... Kind of helping, I think, the majority of people understand... Well, I think the majority of people are are white for the most part. So I'll just say that. Yeah. Um, Most of the listeners that voted on this topic, I think all are white. Or maybe there might be a few Asian or Hispanic mixed in there. But I don't think that we have one black listener that chimed in on this. So I think that that's good because you'll be able to see things from, um, you know, the white person's point of view in this. But... That has opened my eyes a lot yeah. because it's made me see that it's not that there there is a lot of racism, don't get me wrong, but I think that people don't really, there's a lot of people do, that don't want to be racist. They're not trying to be racist. Mm. They just don't understand what's really happening in this world, which right. I was one of them for sure. And so this episode, I felt like we need to go back and we need to talk about where these things got started and and where we are now and how we can maybe move forward so that we are moving into the fifth generation as well because we need... Dimension. Dimension, sorry. We need to, you know, move that way, and we can't move that way if we're stuck in this time of racism and, you know... Yeah, because it's not progression, it's like regression. That's right, exactly. So first I wanted to read a couple of things um, just because we like to give definitions. So let's start with, well, what is race? Okay. Um, race is a person's self-identification with one or more social groups, white, black, Asian, American, Indian, Hispanic, etc. This is a label that we've put on people. Yeah. It's like 
you know, when you go to the DMV and you get your driver's license and you have to check the box of what hair color you have and what mm-hmm. eye color you have, this to me, it it's like that. But, I mean, I understand you're talking about your race and, you know, where you came from, but it's also, it's skin color. Right. We're focusing on skin color here. It's just another box. <clears throat> it doesn't make you, you know, who you are. It's just one part of who you are. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is a strange thing. Yeah. It's this weird stigma that in sort of those, maybe the DMV I could almost understand because it's an identifi- form of identification, so they need to know, but... But that's what I mean. It's a form yeah. of identification. Right. It, that's all, that's it, all is. it is. Right. It's not this right. big thing that we make it out to be like that it makes us so different. It has no other relevance. No, it doesn't. It just says, you know, there's for white, there's not like it says European or, you know, American. Maybe it should. Then you're breaking it down even more because that's all it is. Right. At, at least to, I think, the majority of people now, you know, that's what it means. This is where my ancestors are from. Yeah. But if we look back, we all can be traced back to Africa. Mm-hmm. I looked at my uh, 23andMe stuff, mm-hmm. and it was 0.03% uh, South African, I believe. Yes. We all come from there originally. Yes. And I believe, I, I don't know, if, that the oldest human remains found was what they believe is an African-American woman. Yeah. So. Well, it would make sense. Yeah. It really does, but I don't sure. think we really think about that. No. You know? We're not taught that enough. No, not at all. Not at all. So then what is racism? Uh, racism is the belief that humans may mm-hmm. divide, be divided into separate and exclusive biological entities called races. Mm-hmm. That there is a casual link between inherited physical traits and traits of personality, intellect, morality, and other culture and behavioral features. So when you're saying, like, I think what people do with racism a lot is they put a label on, like, like Hispanics or this. I actually have a, a list in here somewhere. Um, you, like, let's just look at some of, you know, the basic ones. Americans or are, are whites are lazy or, you know, stuff like that. We put labels mm-hmm. on things, and then that's what classifies these races, and that's what... Right. Makes us racist, I supposed. Suppose. Yeah, but you know, and you're going to get into this. A lot of it, a lot of it, we're taught. Yes. Um, I think I read something about where Morgan Freeman was talking about. Well, you can't ignore what happened. No. But we can cross a line, you know, between how much and what part of the story we're shoving down young people's throats. That's right. You know, at our age, I don't really remember much about what we were taught in history. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't think that we were taught much about this particular part, the slavery part, the how this happened. And so that's what we're going to talk about first is how did this start? How did the, the racism, the slavery, where did it come from? Right. Something that I found very interesting in doing this research is that you can kind of relate this to tr- human trafficking. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'll read some of this stuff, and it might, it, to me, it started sounding really familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's slavery? Slavery is a condition in which human beings are owned by another, one human being is owned by another. A slave was considered by law as property. And was deprived of almost all human rights that the ordinary free person held. Not always, but usually involuntary. Right. So, let's see. <clears throat> These are the most common ways that slaves were were generated, okay? For the most part, a lot of them were just kidnapped. Like human trafficking victims. Mm-hmm. Um, this was, gosh, when was this? Back in the 1800s, I think, right? Well... 18 yeah late late 1700s i believe but they had been here are you talking about when they started kidnapping and taking them out of africa and bringing them here into europe well i'm pretty sure that george washington and all those guys had them you're right yeah so that's earlier that's, that's earlier yeah maybe like 1600s yeah. 17 it's basically about 450 500 years yes that would since they've been Came here. Right. Um, so, like I said, most were captured. Most Brought were... against their will, yes. Yeah, they were In boats, kidnapped. chains the boat, chained mm-hmm. the boats yep. underneath yep. and brought here. Yeah. Um, they were captured in war. 
um, let's see, they were an offspring of a slave. So if, you know, one slave has born a baby, then born into it. Yeah. Right. Um, punishment for a crime or debt sold into slavery by parents, relatives, even spouses, often to pay off debt. Un- unwanted children were sold into slavery. And some mm-hmm. people even Jeez. sold themselves. If they had a debt that they had to pay, they, they went into slavery themselves. Wow. So there's a lot of different ways that this this happened, obviously. Mm-hmm. There's also two different types of slavery. There's domestic slavery, which is primary functions were to serve the owners. So like a butler or that type of thing took care of everything, mm-hmm. usually. And then there was the productive slavery, which is more like the commercial working in those types of things, you know, farming, whatever. Right. Uh, those types of production lines. <clears throat> So that's how slavery got started. It just was kind of brought into our society just like everything else. But this is so long ago that we're talking about, you know. So over the years, things have changed and evolved. And slavery obviously is no longer legal in that that way. Um, Let's see. This is in 1807. Thomas Jefferson signed a law banning the importation of enslaved people from Africa. By 1861, when Civil War broke out, more than 4 million people, nearly all American Africans, were enslaved in 15 states and border states. That's a lot. Wow. 4 million. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Isn't it? These are our ancestors. Yes. We don't... Like, I feel like we can't be blamed for what they did because this is so long ago. Right. But we can learn from what they did. We can all learn. We can. The the unfortunate part is that <clears throat> some of these, you know, newer ge- generations are being taught not that, you know. Right. And that's part of the, the systemic exactly. thing happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get into that, yeah. too, as well. Um, Then in 1863, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation announced that all slaves should be set free, but it only applied to the 11 Confederate states. Um, I think there were four or five others that it didn't apply to, so there were still slaves in those states. Um, In April 1864, the U.S. Senate passed a proposed amendment to the Constitution banning slavery, but the House of Representatives refused it, and and it was amended and passed again in January 1865. So finally, they were able to get this passed, right. which made it illegal to own slaves. Now, something interesting that I did read, and you had heard about this mm-hmm. before, too, is that Lincoln wasn't, well, he was a racist himself. Yeah. Because he did not believe that whites and blacks should have the same. He didn't believe there no. was equality. Though. No, there shouldn't no. be equality. And. Um, you had brought up too there about colonization and colonization is where basically you live with your own people. Right. And he felt that that was a great idea that, you know, they should live with each other we should, you know, take right. them back to Africa, let them live there. And we live here, right. which maybe would have solved a lot of our problems looking at it now, unfortunately, you know, but that's just sweeping it under the rug. It and is trying, right. Trying to ignore something that shouldn't be to begin with. No, you know? You're right. It is. I, I think, <clears throat> I don't know. It, who knows how things would have turned out if we would have just said, you know what, sorry. Because it's just... tech, I mean, I see what you're saying, yeah. you know, and maybe it would have created less conflict between two types of people. But the point here is, is that we're all one type of person. So yeah. as technology would have advanced, yeah. what if they would have been in, you know, uh, a military strong force and, and so would America if it wasn't Russia, maybe it would be Africa. You know what I mean? Right. So what's that to keep people from fighting and conflicting? Right. You know, Japan bombing us in Pearl Harbor. I mean, they live totally on their own continent, yet they were able right. to do that. Yeah. So it's not going to stop people from pi- not... fighting until we want to stop fighting. Right. That's what we need to do. Yeah. Absolutely. So we we know after this, you know, this is where we get into our our own history. Mm. And we've seen, you know, the civil rights movements before and how, you know, we had segregation and all that. But we've worked our way through that, or so we thought we had. I think that's where most of us are waking up now, is that we, I think for a lot of white people, we thought that this was behind us. We didn't realize that this was still a big issue. 
And I think, you know, even for some of them, let's rewind back to, you know, our forefathers again, 17, 1600s, 1700s, you know, somewhere in there between, <clears throat> a little after maybe too, but that, so slaves is a modern, normal thing. It's totally not looked upon as bad. Right. As abnormal to most people in society. Right. Okay. But I can assure you that there were people that witnessed things um, against black people that even during that time that oh, they sure. did not agree with. For that, sure. That, as, that they could feel the pain of like, this is another human being. And I think a good example of that is Thomas Jefferson, who not only, he had children with one of his slaves. He had a relationship with one of them. Mm -hmm. So how is a man like that, who's been a president, right. supposed to come forward in front of his peers and say that? Right. You know, from what I understand, that didn't come out for a long time right. uh, that that happened. Yeah. But they've been able to prove that, which is really cool in a way, but sad that he sort of had to hide that. Right, for sure. It And that... That seems to maybe have changed a little bit over the years, but I still feel like there's still a lot of people that have a hard time seeing an interracial couple. Like, they've started doing commercials a long time ago, like Cheerios had an interracial couple, and it's like, to me, honestly, I was like, big deal. I didn't even notice it. It's just a, a husband and a wife, you know? But there were a lot of people that were like, oh, Cheerios is trying to make a point. Well, maybe they weren't. Maybe they were just, they didn't think about it because this should be normal in our society by this point, if you ask me. Right. You know, it shouldn't be such a big deal that if Cheerios makes that kind of commercial, people are like, oh, interracial couple. What difference does it make? You doesn't, know? Doesn't make any difference. No. I mean, if we want to sit and look, you know, if we took our bodies and instead of because our eyes, we rely so much on that sense itself, vision. If we said, okay, I'm going to take my vision, but instead of looking at somebody from the outside in, I'm going to do it from the inside out. Yeah. So for the most part, most of us are constructed of the same number of bones. Yes. The same exact um, internal organs to survive. Uh, you know, meaning you, you got your liver and your lungs and your heart and your stomach and... All, you got all these same things. You got the same um, structures. The women still have breasts. The men still don't. Yep. Um, so, you know, they, we have the same muscles going on, uh, same physique builds in general. And now we get to the very last layer, which is our hair and our skin. Yep. Which is really just a casing to protect what's inside. Made up of mostly water. I mean, we are like 98 or something. Yeah, percent, some crazy amount, percent yeah. water. So maybe that's not the right number, but <clears throat> we're made up of a lot of water. Yeah, we are. Um, so you just get to that outer layer. And, and even internally, psychologically, we all have the same type of brain. Um, we all have the same emotions. We all have the same senses that we're relying on. Right. Uh, I, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. And like one thing that I was thinking about is that if you look at ethnicity, okay, we all have our, our origin, the place that our family originally came from. Okay. But for the most part, if you talk to African Americans, they were did not come from Africa. Their ancestors did, but they're from America. That's why they're called African Americans. So they have the same customs that we do. Right. They may have slightly different things that, you know, they enjoy or but it's the same with Italians. Like I'm my family's Dutch. We have our own traditions. The ethnic ethnicities all have their own traditions, no mm. matter what their skin color is. Sure. So you're just adding, you know, what are, what's your problem really is what I'm getting at. If we all are allowed to have our own ethnicities and our own backgrounds, then what does a little bit in, chin, in skin color change that? Right. Does that make sense? So I want to read some statistics. 
this is a little bit of everything just to kind of give an idea of what is actually going on, what our, our society is made out of. And this is based in the United States because this is gen right now where this problem seems to be stemming from. Um, for those listening in other countries, I'll tell you what, we do appreciate you guys helping out in this. And oh, yeah. I can tell you that the black community especially is very touched I see it all the time, like, whoa. Oh, I was so happy to see other countries yeah. stepping forward and going, what is going on? Me too, for sure. I mean, we don't know what it's like in other countries. We don't live there. We don't know what they're... they're... I'm sure they all have their pros and cons. Yeah, they all have their issues, but this is definitely something that's a huge issue right now here. Mm -hmm. um, in the United States, the population is made up of 13% African Americans. That's not a lot. That's actually a pretty small number if you think about it. So they definitely are a minority. And minorities really generally always have issues. Like they're just, that's what happens with the minorities. I hate to say that. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Talking about, uh, I don't like to get too much into politics, but I thought that this was important. 60% mm -hmm. of African Americans register as Democrats. 34% as Independents. And only 6% as Republicans. Hmm. And I think that goes with a lot of things. Um, but when we get into systemic racism, I think you'll see a lot of how the demographics kind of go. It all goes together. Right. Uh, the highest population of African Americans are in Washington, D.C., where there's 48%. Mississippi has 39%. Georgia and Louisiana have 34, and Maryland has 33. Now, on the lowest, this is really shocking. So, um, I'm not really sure. What did I write? Well, California has 8%. California is a very big state. That's where we live. Very big state. Right. And we have a very high Hispanic population. So, that number, to me, seems it seems pretty normal mm -hmm. for where we are. But in these states, this is pretty crazy. Montana and Idaho only have 1% African American. Yeah. Wyoming, Utah, and Maine all come in with 2%. That's very small population. So when I started doing those numbers, I started thinking about some of these places like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, where they're yeah, probably why? really, well, that's like a culture. I think that's a lot. Of, we're talking about a lot of farmland, a lot of, you know, what you might consider white folk. I mean, I'm not going to be racist here, but right. that is. It's, it's, but the South is is probably one of the most racist areas i would is, think yeah. still today so but look at it why, why not why aren't these areas racist you know what they are but you know why it doesn't show as bad because they have one or two percent population as opposed to georgia with 34 percent. so you see more racism in these higher number states because they have a higher population and uh, because true. Because that's where it started to. I would think more would want to travel north where the vibe might be better based yep, yeah. on because the Civil War was based on the north and the south. Right. But that doesn't mean that some of that influence hasn't moved. Right. Exactly. North. And I mean, if you think about it, like if you were African-American, you're like, well, I want to get out of, you know, wherever it's if it's a high uh, crime area or whatever and get into some place that seems a little bit better. And you're like, hmm, Montana seems like a good place, but it's one percent African-American. Are you going to want to move there? Because I sure wouldn't, because I would figure that they're probably very racist if they don't have a lot of African-Americans in that area because it's not something that they deal with. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're brought up and you're around a lot of different races and cultures, and you know this because mm -hmm. you were born in, in uh, Venice and Santa Monica, very culturally mm -hmm. diverse area, mm -hmm. yeah. you accept people more, you understand more. Um, so these areas that are very low population, I don't know that they would be very understanding. So yeah. that's a whole different type of racism to me, if you yeah. ask. You know, those are the ones where during the riots we saw them standing with their gigantic guns lining up in the street. It's like, whoa, okay. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, because that's not the South. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Race is a social concept, obviously. It's not scientific. It has nothing to do mm -mm. with, we've talked about this, it has nothing to do with who you are. It is completely social. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, a, a lot of like, I think the issues that we have stems back to our parents and our parents' parents. Yeah. We, we take what we saw from them. And if you don't 
take that and make your own beliefs and you just stay with whatever you're taught, then that's kind of how we seem to be continuing on. That's with this. part of the systemic. Exactly. You know, whatever you want to um, disease that, right. that spreads from race to race that's taught, not necessarily in school either. Um, the African American population makes up half of the homeless population. Wow. That's a horribly high number mm -hmm. to have 13% African American, but mm -hmm. half of your home. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, let's see. What else did I put here for you? Um, so let's talk a little bit about police involvement and, I'm not against police. I, you know, I think everybody is their own individual. Right. Um, but if you would like to look up some of these statistics and or more yourself, there is a website called mappingpoliceviolence.org, and it lists every single person that's been killed by a police officer, their age, their their like their ethnicity, you know, all of that, so that you can kind of see what's going on, right? Um, but. In those statistics, it says that African Americans are three times more likely to be killed by police than whites. And if you look at the, the population and then you look at those numbers, yeah. you know, you have a lot of people going, but whites are killed by police. Right. Asians are killed by police. Sure, they all are. But there's when you see these numbers, you know, you have to look at all the figures. You can't just be like, oh, well, here. It's because of the population difference. Yeah. You know, got to take that into consideration. Yeah. Um, African Americans are nine times more likely to be stopped by the police and three times more likely to be arrested. They are also five times more likely to have force used on them. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that that is because they're bad people. No. You can't mm -mm. because there's bad people in every race mm -hmm. and every ethnicity. Right. Sorry. Some of the most heinous crimes on our land has been by white males right it, it really has yeah um so we've talked about a little bit about systemic racism but what what is it i think we need to get into it a little bit yeah uh, and and i'll be honest with you until i did this research i had no idea what this meant i i was completely oblivious to any of this and does that make me a racist no no does that make me mm, ignorant i don't think so i think it's just that when you live your own life and you don't see this happening every day, you don't really know what's going on for everybody. It's hard to see. You, you know? I mean, you are perfect or were, were a perfect example of white privilege. Yes. So you lived, grew up in a predominantly white area. Yes. You weren't um, forced to have to socialize or go to school with other ethnicities. No, most I went of the to time. private school. Right. So. Yeah. And that's a privilege. Yes. <clears throat> that as you get into this, we'll explain how that all kind of ties together. Yeah. But. Well, what is systemic racism? Uh, this is racism from the point of government, business, schools, mm -hmm. those types of things, right. not your, your social. Um, it's a, a reference to systems in place that create and maintain racial inequality in all facets of life for people of color. Uh, I watched this little cartoon, and if I remember, I'll share it on our Facebook page, and it kind of showed how this uh, systemic racism works. So when all of like the changes started with the civil rights movements and stuff, there were certain things that you weren't supposed to discriminate on. You're still not supposed to discriminate right. on them. But there were ways that they did. They got around these things. And segregation was definitely, it was definitely one of them. Oh, yeah. Um, and so one of the things that they used was called redlining. And they, this, I have a diagram, actually, that says that this area was in Georgia between the 1800s and 1980s. And it shows the black area. And then it shows the area that was redlined, like where most of the blacks are. And then the other map, it shows the red line. And what the red line is, is an outline of areas that's supposed to be less desirable. So banks should not give loans in those areas because it's a less desirable area. Mm -hmm. So that, and then if you look where the, the blacks are, this was their area. Mm -hmm. This was their area. There, mm -hmm. there was no mistaking it. So these people had a really hard time getting loans, getting good loans. That's like an economic segregation. That's exactly right. Something that a lot of people don't know, and I really honestly didn't realize this, is that 
we that our property taxes are what fund our schools. So if you live in an area where the property taxes are really low, it's a poor area, then there's less money going to the schools, but there's more kids in those areas. Mm -hmm. So you have more kids in a less funded school, so they're not getting the kind of education that they would in an area with rich housing mm -hmm. that their their property taxes go into rich schooling. Yep. It's obvious. You yep. can see that the poorer areas right. have poorer schools. Right. Why is that fair? So now you start to look at as we go through time, you know, from this period in the 60s and and this redlining kind of thing they were doing and seeing how it was sort of like herding cattle. They're slowly mm -hmm. herding cattle in and, you know, funneling them in to one or certain locations. Right. So now today we look at place like places like inner cities, okay? Right. Where are mainly ethnic, if not black, okay? I'm talking about like downtown areas. Right. The cities where these people are living in these apartment buildings mm -hmm. above businesses, or in buildings owned by right. the banks that are doing the redlining. Right, exactly. Because those buildings are owned by somebody. Right. They're just simply renting it out. That's right. There's a lot of people that will deny that this is even happening. Or no, that it it's ever been happening, happening for so long. It's a fact. Look it up. It, that's the thing is that you need proof. Look it up. It, it's happening. <clears throat> it may not. You know, I I can't say that the redlining is still happening. I don't know. But what I can say is that if you drive through California, you will see that there are predominantly black areas, right. predominantly Hispanic areas. It's just the way that it goes. And mm. it is because they're, when you ha are in an area like that, like let's take Compton, California. Okay, mm. this is a predominantly black area. Very high crime rate. Mm. Okay. Um you take that area and like let's say this was kind of in the cartoon that there's a household that has four kids okay they're all trying to get through school which is really hard to do when you can't get the proper education and you're in a very bad environment and you you're raised right. in this area and there's nothing you can do about it but right. one kid in that household decides that he's going to make it and he's going to go to college so he goes to college and you know what He's going to have a harder time getting a job when he gets out of college. And that's a fact, too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop. It has to right. stop because the, these people that are in these areas that are trying to get out have right. such a hard time. So instead of trying to make <clears throat> these people successful by all four of those kids, giving them the proper education, mm -hmm. we, we don't. And we just, right. you know, one or two trickle out and it just continuously is a horrible, bad cycle. Right. It is a major change to our economic system to fix this. Yeah, it is. And I think that's why huge. people pretend that it's not happening because to have to reconstruct it all mm -hmm. would be very difficult. And then to address it as something that's been started because of racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a whole other problem. Right. Cause nobody really wants to admit that they're a racist. Right. They just pretend it's not happening. You know? Yep. Let's see. Uh, so in this video that I watched, it also says that if you have a black name, you are two times less likely to get a call back from like a job resume or something. If you're like the, on this, his name was Jamal. Mm -hmm. It's the white man will have twice as more likely that he'll get a call back just yep. because of the name. Mm -hmm. That's systemic racism. It is. And I think a lot of people do that and don't even realize right. it. You know? I think when you pose the question of, you know, like, do you believe there's such a thing as white privilege? Yeah. I don't think that any white person can even understand what white privilege really is. Right. That's why so many people don't believe that, that there is such thing as white privilege. Yeah. I think another hard part of this, like I had said a little bit before, is that just admitting that there's a problem or that you may be a little bit racist mm -hmm. or that you may have, you know, these kind of tendencies, nobody wants to face that. That's a hard thing to have to face about yourself. It's not easy for me to say I had white privilege. And so I probably grew up in a, I know I did, grew up in a much better way than most African Americans did. That's not my fault. I'm not a bad person because I grew up the way that I did. 
I think a lot of white people hear white privilege and they think that it makes them a bad person. It really has nothing to do with you. No. It's not who you are. It's the society. It's what's what's yeah. happened to us. You've been taught it kind of, not like while you were asleep, but right. you didn't really know. Right. As young people, we don't really understand some of this stuff because so much of it has been tried to be swept under the rug or yeah. that it's almost presented like it's not an issue. Right. But it is an issue. Well, let's talk about it. Um, what is white privilege? <clears throat> Let me first tell you what it is not. Okay, white privilege does not suggest that whites haven't suffered. It's not no. saying you haven't been through bad things in your life or no. that you're not going to go through bad things in your right. life. It doesn't mean your accomplishments weren't earned. Right. If you went to college and you got a degree, it doesn't that didn't happen because you're white. Mm -mm. But it's a lot harder for that to happen for an African American. Yeah. You, it was easier for you because you're white. Again, it's not your fault. Yep. Um, doesn't make you a bad person. Um, and acknowledging that you had white privilege does not make you a racist. I no. think it's very important that people understand that. Yeah. I think a lot of people think they're going to get pigeonholed into something. And that's, that's not at all what we're talking about. Right. That's not at all what that implies. Right. So I did, uh, I, I found several articles that broke it down where it's, it says, take this quiz and, and how many of these things can you relate to? So I'm going to ask some things here. Okay. Um, let's see. I can go shopping alone most of the time, pretty well assured that I will not be followed or harassed. Um, 15 people took this poll and all 15 said that they would agree with that, that they do not feel that they will be harassed. There's not one African-American that took this poll, but if they did, I can tell you that they wouldn't have checked that box because that's a part of what happens to them. And that's a part of white privilege. You don't have to feel that. Right. Um, I can be in the company of my own race most of the time. Imagine in a town like where we grew up in Thousand Oaks, where I grew up there in my elementary school, in my grade, there were two black kids in the whole class. So most, and there was one boy, one girl. So that girl to have female friends had to have all white friends. She didn't have the option or, you know, whatever races we had, but it was mostly white at school. So she didn't have that option to be at school surrounded by people of her own ethnicity. She was usually the, the odd person out. Hmm. Most white people cannot say that. They can't. No. I can go into a supermarket and find foods that fit my cultural traditions for us, that's not an issue. Yeah, no. No. Um, I can do well in challenging situations without being called a credit to my race. How many times do we hear he's an amazing basketball player because he's African American? Or you know right. what I mean? They associate it. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with it. He's a good athlete. Right. You know, are they good athletes? Can you generalize that? I'm not sure. Because there's different sports, uh, you know, and there's. I mean, for the particular. I would say for basketball because of their height yeah, and their they do. agility usually have a height difference. Mm -hmm. and things like that, for sure. Right. But then you look at um, baseball and there's plenty of black baseball players. Yeah, there didn't used to be, but yeah, there are now for sure. I mean, I think the one you don't see as much is hockey. Yeah, there's not many hockey or NASCAR. NASCAR, they don't, they have one. Right. You know, but yeah, it. That doesn't mean that they're good at one particular sport. It just means maybe this is basketball is probably something that that's what right. they play grew up playing. You know, right. that was their school, their sport at school, like you said, with height. But it doesn't make African Americans good at basketball. Mm -hmm. That's just you know, that's racist. Uh, but we don't realize that that's a racist comment. Right. Uh, let's see. When I am told about our national heritage or our civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. Oh, I absolutely would agree that that that's that's the case for whites. Yeah. When we take history, it's mostly, you know, let's talk about George Washington. Let's talk about all of these white men. And, and let's talk about Christopher Columbus, who didn't well, even do anything good and was praised for years. <laughs> I know. I mean, you guys, I'm not saying that the these people that started America were dumb by any means. I don't think that. No. I think they were very smart. I think that they were very naive yes. about some things. Yes. And we honestly 
have them to thank for this being placed in our society the way that it was placed here. Right, exactly. How about, like, why don't you bring all these people over, ask them if they want to come first. Right. And then offer them jobs and maybe re- <clears throat> affordable housing right. that they could live in. Yeah. Maybe that approach, not... You're mine. Yeah, and a very animalistic approach. In a, you know, we know that that's... We see that in movies and, and television, the way that it's been portrayed, and it's true. It is. I'm sure that there was many masters or owners that were really cool to their... Oh, I'm to their sure. Slaves. I'm sure. So I'm not knocking everybody, but... That owned them. <clears throat> I am knocking the fact that you owned another person. <laughs> yeah, but back then they didn't. I they didn't know any better. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like every generation has something where we just didn't know any better, and right. we learn, and that's how we evolve and we grow. Right. That's how we'll one day get off this planet and be able to step onto a new world. Right. Is by, you know, taking on the new frontier, the new challenge. You know, braving it doing it and that's what these guys did in a lot of ways but they also instilled a really bad bacteria in our society yes absolutely that's where we have to try and change it now yeah we have to try somehow to make it more equal Um, a few more things about white privilege Um, The level of societal advantage that comes from being seen as the norm in America is a big part of white privilege. When you're seen as different, your privilege isn't the same. Um, It's very hard for people to see this that have never experienced it. Um, It's a concept that people, uh, let's see, concept that people have basic rights and benefits simply because they are white. Um, And we need to... These black people need to feel the same way. Mm -hmm. They need to feel like when a police officer is following them in their car, that they have just as much likelihood to get pulled over as the white man. But Mm -hmm. it's that's not how it works. Or when they go into that, you know, two college graduates of the same school. Right. Knowing that I have just as much of a good chance of getting that job than that guy does. Right. Exactly. Doesn't matter what I look like. Right. With everything, we don't know what other people feel because we're not them. You know, it's like, let's just take a hypothetical situation. Let's say that coronavirus would have stayed in China and we wouldn't have had it here. We wouldn't know here what it's like. So we wouldn't really be able to judge it so much. We'd probably think they're overreacting. People are dying, but it's just as much as the flu. It's not a big deal. When you start to see it for yourself, that's when you start to notice it. But because we're white... We don't have that unless we went to like a predominantly black area and then we might feel that. But that's not how we were raised. That's white privilege, not your fault. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So how do we help now? Because things need to change, right? You know what, before I go into this, I want to read something because I found this earlier today and it really kind of touched with me and I think it breaks things down a little bit better. And this comes to the term of Black Lives Matter. This is another thing we should address because Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like that term, Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, because they believe all lives matter and we believe all lives matter. Everybody matters. But that's not what we're talking about. No. So let's break it down with this. That I found this today. A friend of mine posted this on Facebook. Carrots are a vegetable. Carrots are a vegetable is a complete sentence. It's a statement, a fact, that carrots are a vegetable. Changes nothing from broccoli or the lettuce. The broccoli is not less of a vegetable because the carrot is one also. The lettuce vegetableness is not diminished by the carrot being a vegetable too. Right. Okay. As you read, as you heard the proclamation of carrots are vegetables, you probably didn't feel an urge to qualify the statement. You probably didn't feel that other vegetables were threatened or needed to be defended. (laughs) You probably didn't think that anything else needed to be added to the sentence in order to make the statement complete. Now, Black Lives Matter. A complete sentence. A statement. A fact. That a Black Lives Matters change that a black life matters changes nothing for the life of a white woman or a police officer. 
The life of someone else does not matter less because a person, a black life matters also. Your own life's value is not diminished by a black life having value too. As you heard that, that black lives matter, did you feel any urge to qualify? Did you feel threatened or like you needed to defend something? Did you think something else needed to be added to the sentence to make it complete? If you did, take a minute and wonder why that is. Why is it easier to accept a statement that of, about a vegetable than it is about a human being? <laughs> That's I actually love a wonderful that. analogy. Isn't that great? I, I saw that really right is. before we started recording and I was like, boom, there you go. Right. That's That explains it. It doesn't mean that you don't matter, the white man. That's not what it's saying. But right now, we're dealing with the carrots. We're dealing with the blacks. We're trying to help them so that they can have more equality. Nothing to take away from you. Nothing you have to worry about. We could make the society better. Yeah. You know, and I've even pondered this, you know, in, in regards to the systemic aspect of all this is how many people were just raised in homes that this is what they were taught and they know that's all they've ever known so they don't question it right so how many of these gun wielding rednecks hate blacks for anything that blacks ever did to them that's exactly right there was a video oh it's horrible of um i don't want to use the term redneck but let's just say it because it's that's what it comes off to me as they got their confederate flags and you know their other flags and they're waving them and one white man is standing with his foot on or his knee on another white man's neck pretending that they're part of the whole george floyd thing and acting it out which is just absolutely ridiculous to me. And I'm watching this video. There were like four men in it or something. And I'm thinking, what causes people to be like this? And you know what? You're right. Because that little boy whose daddy taught him all this stuff, he mm. wants to make his daddy proud. Yeah. So he wants to get out there with his Confederate flag and wave it around because sure. that's what he was taught. This well, that's is what instinctively we all want to make our parents proud. Right. So the problem is, is it starts with the parent. Yes. You know, yes, that's the because the kid is like a little sponge. Yes. You're just going to soak it up. Soak it up. That's absolutely right. We were watching yesterday uh, Flashback Friday on MTV and they uh, were showing old MTV Video Music Awards and Chris Rock was the host. Yeah. And we were both like. Whoa, they couldn't say that was 99, 1999. And they said, uh, we said he couldn't do these things. He couldn't do these jokes. Mm -mm. No, there, there is a level of what we've been raised with and what we hear and what we've said. And, you know, there's a lot of the society that doesn't think that the N word is maybe as bad as it is because we've never been called it. And so as our generation's gotten older, we've been taught not to use that word because it doesn't belong to us. That so much so that now this younger generation, for the most part, if you use that word, Oh, they'll lynch you. Yeah. And you know what? That's kind of the way that this has to work. Mm -hmm. We have to breed it out and our children have to have to help us. And they are because that generation, this younger generation, they're amazing. It will for sure. For sure. So let's so let's go back to this. Um, how do we how do we help? If you're the average white man and you don't know what to do, how do you help? Well, first of all, you acknowledge that it's a problem. Yeah, that's the first thing in anything is acknowledging that's that half it's a the problem. Battle, yeah. Exactly. Don't be afraid to say this is a problem. Or yes, I was raised in a house a racist household. Or yes, I have racist beliefs. Just change them. Mm-hmm. Just work on them recognize them, acknowledge them, um, talk about your beliefs with others. Because the thing is, is that we learn from each other. Like through this podcast, I've learned a lot doing the research, but you guys probably are learning something through the research that I've done that maybe you didn't hear anywhere else. And so we're helping to educate and you guys help to educate and talk to other people and, you know, so that everybody's on the same page would be great, yeah. you know, but if you don't listen to other people and you don't <laughs> talk about it, you know, and I think that's, that's a huge problem because this is one of those areas where we just want to fight. We want to, and this yeah. was a problem in our group this week, actually. It's the first time we've had the problem where people started getting upset about a topic Yeah, and I had to shut him down. 
Um, <clears throat> and I and I sat back and I thought about it that night. I, I put up in the group and I said, we don't do that here. This is an, a nice, peaceful group. We don't do that. And then I thought about it and I went back the next day and I addressed it. And the thing is, is that if you address hate with hate, you're just going to hate get hate back. Yep. But if you approach hate with love and you try and explain not necessarily why the person is wrong, but maybe the things that they're not seeing in the situation, it can change them a little bit. You can't tell somebody that they're wrong because then, you know, they're like, oh, I'm not going to change that. But trying to help somebody, trying to acknowledge that, okay, I understand what you're saying, Mm -hmm. but let's look at this from their point of view, you know? If you can have these deep conversations and be yeah. a little bit more understanding instead yeah. of needing to fight, right? Hear each other. Then, yeah, once that starts happening enough in society, in society, we can get to all lives matter. But we're not there. That's not right. the focus because of the situation, right? But if we could start to do more of what you're talking about, I think everybody would start to feel that way, right? That exactly. we all matter. We do. We all matter. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. Nope. But right now, we need to address this situation. Yep. That's right. Uh, a couple other things you can do are sign petitions. There's a lot of petitions going around right now to, you know, change um, basic rights and, you know, the way that it's dealt with in the police force. I'm not saying we should defund the police. I don't even know, really, if that's a good idea. What I'm saying yeah. is find those ones that make sense to you and sign them. If you don't know about them, don't sign them. Mm-hmm. But that does help. Um, let's see, support black businesses. That's a great way to help. Um, be kind with your beliefs. We kind of talked about that. If you fight hate with hate, you're going to get hate, you know, bring on your love. Yeah. Listen. And really, honestly, one of the biggest things that I think and what I'm seeing out there that we can do right now to change this is vote. Get out there and vote. That's your chance. That's your voice. Yep. This and, is it. you know, as long as some people don't get involved with the voting process, <laughs> then it should be democratic. You know, it's not a perfect system at all. There's all <clears> kinds <throat> of problems. But if there's a landslide win here, then yeah. there's no denying what happened. Right. Um, our country needs leadership and it doesn't have any right now. We need some. Yeah. We need somebody to help us. And I'm not saying that, you know, the presidential candidates are the best. But we need change. We need a little compassion in the White House. Yes, we do. You know, if that's what our government's still going to, you know, that's going to be the central hub. That's, we need that. There's a lot of people that blindly follow our government. You know, if they're Republican, they follow the Republicans. If they're Democrat, they follow the Democrats. You know what? I don't care who the president, the person was right now, like, who, if they acted like this, it doesn't matter to me if they're Democrat or Republican. Right. It doesn't matter. I don't, it needs to be a compassionate, yeah. loving person that will help us through these times. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe even, you know, African American, African American vice president would be nice. Yeah, I'd like to see a woman. Well, yes. I oh, really yeah, would. I would have loved I think that there yeah. would be a level of compassion there. I think. I'm not saying you got to go out and dig up a lot of dirt, but maybe know a little bit more about the people right. you know that are seeking these jobs more than just their campaign commercials. Right. You know, for, on a personal level, if you're looking, you know, yeah, do do a little bit more research and, um, but the politics thing has always been a battle. It it it, and, it has. We need something to change in that area. Yeah. And that you know, I saw some posts that somebody shared on Facebook that where you know the party switched back in the the sixties, I think. Really? Yeah, they flopped. Oh, really? So it's like essentially what re- Republican was is Democratic, hmm. and what Democratic was Republican. But there's much more to it. I had, yeah, I had no idea. I never heard that. So there was a big long conversation about all that, and I didn't really go too much into it, but I I do remember somewhat about that. So. It did, <laughs> It just gets so messy. I don't see yeah. what the purpose of even having. It's bad. You know, the parties per se, yeah. but, you know, something totally not off topic, but that was sh- shared uh, by a friend of mine who's African-American, Sean, great bass player, too, that uh, the Black Wall Street that we were talking about right. in a previous ep- episode, that the Gap Band is 
the GAP stands for Greenwich, Archwood, and Parker, which are the three districts that were bombed by farmers and their planes with Molotov cocktails. That's how they burned 30 square blocks of this very high class neighborhood that was predominantly African American. It was um, planned. Yeah. They saw and felt threatened by some sort of uprising by a different color and chose a situation that couldn't even be proven to ignite this whole conflict. Um, And so when Sean shared that, I was like, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And and we always hear that song, You Drop the Bomb on Me. Mm Mm-hmm which is exactly what they're talking about in that song. And I would always tell you oh when we gosh, hear it out public the song for me, totally. that all I hear is that, <laughs> yeah. you know, in, in throughout the whole song. <laughs> yeah. Never knowing that that's what that song was about. That's crazy. And when he shared it, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Because it's such an upbeat song, you would figure that it would be about. And know, I'm surprised, you know, for like, I, I try to learn about music and little quirky things, you know, facts about right. things. And I'd never heard that. That's it's crazy. like, you know, wonder they tried to keep that under the rug or, you know, but that's yeah, pretty cool. Was. Actually. I was like, Whoa, that is cool. Yeah. And it just found out about it. Like, <laughs> like a week ago or two weeks ago, right around the time. Yeah. I was reading about it and we were talking about it. Pretty so. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good piece of history. Yeah. Well, that's all I got for this. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure that there are a few people listening that are like, "Er, your beliefs. But you know sure. what? That's true. These are our beliefs. Mm-hmm. Everybody is entitled to theirs. Um, we're the type that we would love to see a united states. We would like to see our people united and happy and not fighting. And in order to do that, you have to look at what's actually going on. You can't pretend it's not happening. Right. That's not getting us anywhere. Pretending no. these things aren't happening, mm-mm. it's time to face this it. This is like the land of the free, liberty and justice for all. Right. So are we or are are we not? Right. Exactly. So, so we need to work on it. So if you ask me, race has got nothing to do with it. It's got nothing to do with it at all. At all. We can change it and make it better in the future yeah. so that we can all be more equal and these, these systemic racism right. issues are dealt with and... For yep. sure. Well, it was good. I think so. Emotional. I forgot my tissues, uh, of course. Uh-oh. I know. Well, you'll have to run as soon as we're done. I will. <laughs> well, before we do say goodbye, you want to share your pages really fast? Yes. You can find everything on my website, samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. I actually did get a blog post up last week for the first time in six months. Uh, I wrote about my relationship with my father for Father's Day. That was good. Thank you. So you can find that on the website or you can go to noplacelikehometheblog.com and find it there. Cool. Hey. And you? Yes. uh, djonesartcollection.com for the art. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at djonesartcollection. And for the music, Uh, gypsybrown.com. for the web and Instagram at Gypsy Brown Music and Facebook at Gypsy Brown Band. Haven't gotten much work done on the website, but that's okay. We're yeah. we're moving along. Everything's moving. We're about ready to wrap up the first song here, so we'll Yay. be releasing in probably a month or so, and a couple months actually. But got a little bit more work to do post on it. But we're excited! Yay! It sounds really good. I'm excited too. It does sound really good. And that's all I got. Great. Well, we hope everybody got something out of this. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. And you do. Stay safe out there. It's a crazy world right now. Yes, it is. Yeah. But we'll get through it. We will. Together, all of us as one. Yes. Um, individually, separately in our own homes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With a mask. With a mask. But we will get through it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but until then, everybody have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week. Until then, peace, peace and love. love.